Hey, this is Jeff, and today I'm going to try to answer a question that's been bugging me since I noticed some major differences in skill levels between a few of my Fallout 3 characters. Specifically, I want to talk about perfect characters. By perfect, I mean all special stats at 10, which is only possible if you have Broken Steel installed, and all skills at 100. Broken Steel raises the maximum player level from 20 to 30, and adds a perk at level 30 called Almost Perfect, which raises all of your special stats to 9, so if you wait to collect the special bobbleheads until after you take that perk, you can have straight 10s in your special stats. Should be mindful. Fox. The perk doesn't exist in New Vegas, so a perfect character isn't possible in that game. This is Lone Wanderer Jeff from a save game shortly after my walkthrough of Quo Vagis. He took the almost perfect perk at level 30, but he collected the bobbleheads years ago, so he'll never have straight 10s in his special stats. That's okay, because he started out being modeled on my real-life appearance and attributes, and believe it or not, I'm far from perfect in real life, too. More interestingly, most of his skills are 100, but unarmed is only 53. He almost certainly read some of the unarmed skill books along the way, so he's never going to have straight 100s. Whereas this is Zoe, and her skills are all 100 at level 26. Her special stats won't be perfect until she hits level 30, but I had to wonder, how did she max out her skills so early when Jeff's never will be? They both have intelligence of 10 and the educated perk, so they both got the same number of skill points per level. And then I did a video last month where I used a much earlier save file for Jeff, and that's what really got me thinking. He was so young and promising, where did he go wrong? Also, like, real life Jeff. Anyway, I started wondering if you can get all your skills to 100 by level 20, so you wouldn't even need to have Broken Steel installed. Granted, your special stats wouldn't be perfect, but your skills would. And it turns out the answer is a big yes. In fact, I think you'll be surprised at how quickly you can get all your skills to 100 if you plan carefully and min-max your stats. This is Lone Wanderer Jeff's autosave at the point of leaving Vault 101 after the tutorial missions. The only two things you must do in the tutorial are pick up the medicine bobblehead and pick up but do not read the Grognak comic. You get the chance to respect your special stats and tag skills when you leave, so what you pick in the tutorials doesn't matter. And this isn't even close to how I was originally spec'd, but you'll see some interesting choices. The key thing is that your special stats give you bonus skill points in their related skills, but not every stat is related to the same number of skills. Strength is only related to one skill, melee weapons, so every point you take in strength only gives you two skill points. That means we need to completely dump strength. Perception is related to three skills, energy weapons, explosives, and lockpicking, so every point in perception is worth six skill points. We'll need that to be 10 before we're done, but there are two permanent buffs we can get, the Perception Bobblehead and a Quest Reward, so we can start that at 8. Intelligence is also related to three skills, Medicine, Repair, and Science, but we need that to be 10 before we leave the Vault, even if it means we're wasting the Intelligence Bobblehead. As soon as you step outside, you level up. If Intelligence is 10, we get 20 skill points to distribute. If it's 9, we only get 19, and as you'll see in a minute, this is going to be tight. Literally every single point is critical. Luck isn't related to any specific skills, but every two points of luck boosts every skill by one. Fractions are rounded up, so it only needs to be nine, which adds five points to every skill. That's huge. Endurance, Charisma, and Agility are all related to two skills each, so every point in any one of them adds four skill points. It doesn't really matter how you split them up, except Agility needs to be at least four, so we can take a few perks that will boost our skills even more. If you'd rather have more action points, put more in agility, but I don't use VATS much, so I will put the rest in endurance to get the extra hit points. And despite what most people think, charisma isn't completely useless in Fallout 3. It is in New Vegas, where speech challenges are based entirely on your speech skill, but in Fallout 3, speech challenges are based on a fairly complicated formula that factors in your speech skill, your charisma stat, your karma, and the NPC's disposition toward you. I could do a whole episode just on that, but if your character wants to rely on persuasion in Fallout 3, you can't treat charisma as an automatic dump stat the way you would in New Vegas. Okay, we're done with the special stats, now for the tag skills. 
Charisma and strength are only one, so their related skills, barter, speech, and melee weapons, are starting in a huge hole. So we'll tag those to start digging the way out. And now we can leave the vault. Stepping outside completes the quest Escape, and the XP from that will level us up immediately. Well, almost immediately. Might as well start heading toward Megaton until we get the quest completion message. We'll put 18 points in barter, which sounds weird because that's not normally a top priority. By the mid to late game, you usually have a comfortable amount of caps, or you might be filthy stinking rich if you're OCD about looting. But in this case, we're going to need a lot of money fast, for reasons we'll see in a bit. And two points in explosives so we can disarm the bomb in Megaton right away. For our first perk, we're going to take Gun Nut, which gives us five points each in small guns and repair. Ordinarily, that's kind of a waste, but if the goal is to speedrun our skills to 100, then every point counts, so we'll be taking quite a few of the perks that give you bonus skill points. So now we'll head for Megaton, and any second now we'll start getting pop-ups about the DLC. But on the way, let's geek out with some math to see just how tight it's going to be. 13 skills at 100 points each means we eventually need to accumulate 1,300 skill points. Right now we have 334. We already have the medicine bobblehead, and collecting the other 12 skill bobbleheads will get us 120 more points. Picking up the perception bobblehead and the ant sight perk gets us 12 more points in the perception related skills. If we take the comprehension perk, every skill book adds 2 points. If you collect every skill book possible, 320 of them, that's 640 points. That's a different number than you'll find on the Fallout wiki, but the wiki's wrong, for reasons I'll get into when we talk about books. We can pick up 12 points for the Wasteland Survival Guide, and 10 more if we get Use Bear Charm for completing Oasis. That brings us to 1128, so we'll need 172 more points from leveling up to get to straight 100s. And now, let's step into Megaton and talk to Sheriff Sims. Who only a 10% chance. Burned because my charisma is only one, but might as well ask. Demolition expertise doesn't come cheap. I want 500 caps. Not an option, I'm afraid. We aren't exactly rolling in cash down here. That's fine. Hundreds cool. Great. Go ahead and see what you can do. Just be careful. All right, I have to go. Carry on. The first thing we're going to do is disarm the bomb. This is mandatory because the reward yes. from Lucas is the deed to the abandoned house, and two of the skill books come with the themes that Moira sells for it. Plus, it's a convenient base of operations, and we get a decent chunk of change in the process. 500 would have been better, but even if I'd put all my points in speech, the odds would have still been against us because of my abysmal charisma, so barter was the better investment there. I'll be damned. You did it, didn't you? You disarmed that thing. Here's your reward. Hell, why don't you move in? Could use someone like you. Got an empty place here you can use. Here's the key indeed. It ain't much to look at, but talk with Moira. She's got random odds and ends you might be able to spruce the place up with. Back to the math. At third level, we'll get 20 points plus 10 more from a skill perk. At fourth level, we'll only get 20 points because we'll take the educated perk, which will give us three bonus points at every level from five onward. At fifth level, we'll get 23 points and take the comprehension perk to double the bonus from skill books. At level six, seven, and eight, we'll go back to taking skill perks and get a total of 33 points at each of those three levels. If you're following along with a calculator, that's 172. Yep. That means on paper we can get all skills to 100 by level 8, but there's literally zero margin for error. I'm going to put my Grognak comic in the desk so I don't read it by mistake before I'm ready, and sell everything else but my gun, my stim packs, and the clothes on my back, including anything in here that isn't nailed down. The one thing we can't do is sleep in the bed here. Uh, it might seem counterintuitive, but the biggest risk to this plan is getting too much experience. There's a very real possibility that we could hit level 9 before we go everywhere and do everything we need to do to farm skill points, so I don't want the XP bonus for being well rested. That also means we aren't going to do any quests that aren't absolutely necessary. 
the necessary quests are Power of the Atom, which we just did, those to get the Ant Sight perk, Oasis to get Use Bear Charm, the Wasteland Survival Guide for a couple skill books and the Survival Guru perk, and the American Dream to get the Energy Weapons Bobblehead in Raven Rock. Hey, I hear you're that stray from the vault. Oh, I haven't seen one of you for years. I'm not actually going to do the Wasteland Survival Guide yet for two reasons. First, you need to complete all of the optional objectives to get the Wasteland Guru perk, and you need to have Science 50 for that. Second, the American Dream has a bunch of prerequisite quests, and they reward you with more XP than side quests. Doing them first will give me a better idea of how much headroom I have left for the little stuff as I approach level 8. Now, ordinarily, you talk to Moriarty, he'd tell you to talk to Three Dog, he'd tell you to talk to Dr. Lee, she'd tell you to search the Jefferson Memorial, and Dad's holotapes would tell you where he went. But that's a whole lot of XP I can avoid when my psychic powers are telling me he's somewhere around here. We'll just set a marker and gun it. One more thing before I forget, I'm going to lower the difficulty all the way down to very easy. I'm going to avoid killing enemies as much as possible, at least until I see how far I level up from the quest experience. And that means I'm going to be running away or just tanking the damage in a lot of cases, so I don't want them hitting me very hard. The math is the same on harder difficulty settings, it'd just be more of a tedious grind because you'd be burning through more stim packs and running home to sleep more often. Speaking of running, there's some debate about what factors affect the player's movement speed in Fallout 3. Obviously, you run faster with your weapon holstered, and if you're over-encumbered, you can't run at all. But some people claim carrying more weight slows you down even before you reach that encumbrance limit. I have no empirical evidence of that, but I'm traveling light just in case. I've also read that the kind of armor you're wearing makes a difference. Now, that's definitely true in New Vegas, where they actually have armor split up into light, medium, and heavy categories. Those categories either don't exist in Fallout 3, or they're not visible to the player. But I'm sticking with my Tunnel Snake outfit just in case, which should be the next best thing to being naked. Oh! <laughs> Bloat flies. <laughs> don't care. Ah! And finally, the game documentation implies that your agility stat increases your speed, and some people swear it does. If I was 100% sure that was true, I might have sacrificed some endurance for more agility, but since I'm not, I went for the sure thing, because more endurance absolutely increases your hit points. Are they chasing me? Apparently not. Good. I don't know if it's my agility score, but I definitely can't outrun vicious dogs. Fortunately, almost all enemies in the game have a pursuit <gasps> rate. Ow! Uh, pursuit radius, beyond which they'll just go back to patrolling the area where they spawned. Yeah, they already gave up. Since we've got some time, let's talk about books. In theory, there are 25 books for each skill, times 13 skills, times 2 points per book, with the comprehension perk, is 650 possible points, which is the figure given on the skills page on the Fallout wiki. But for whatever reason, probably a bug, there are only 23 copies of the barter book in the game. Also, two books come with themes for your Megaton house, and two come with themes for the Tenpenny Tower apartment. But you can only own one of those two homes. Since I already own the Megaton house, the speech book and the science book that come with the Tenpenny themes are unavailable. So you can never collect more than 321 out of the 325 theoretically available books. And the picture is slightly worse for me, because one Small Guns book is inside Regulator HQ, and one more speech book is inside the Scrapyard office, which can only be accessed if you have the Lawbringer perk and the Contract Killer perk respectively. Both of those perks are locked to level 14, so both of those books will be unavailable until it's too late to matter. Which brings me down to 319 books, but there's a unique speech book, Paradise Lost, that I can get, which brings me back up to 320 books for 640 points. And Dad's close. I can sense his aura. He must be in this building up ahead. Yep, Smith Casey's garage. He's kind of a tinkerer. That makes sense. Nip inside, avoid any wildlife that Dad didn't bother clearing out. Jump over the counter and grab a skill book. Tumblers today, which we're obviously not going to read yet. 
and see if I can slip downstairs without getting mauled by mole rats. So far, so good. If you've played the game, you know the drill. Get false suit from robot, enter the simulation pod, do the tranquility lane simulation, deal with Betty's head games, rescue dad. If you haven't, and you want to see it done right, there are plenty of good walkthroughs on YouTube. Just search for Tranquility Lane. Now, Tranquility Lane is a very cool quest, very cool environment, but I'm in a hurry, and you don't need to do any of it. Just run straight to the abandoned house, use the objects to play the melody that Betty's always whistling. It's Radio Pitcher Gnome Pitcher Block Gnome Bottle. Use the terminal to initiate the Chinese Invasion Failsafe program. And then head straight for the door that appears in the playground. No need to talk to Betty or anyone else. Done. I don't know what the world's record for speedrunning that quest is, but that had to be pretty close. So let's talk to Dad. Son, you've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. It would be good to work with you, son. And we level up. Be careful, my son. In fact, it looks like twice. So, level three, we're going to take two more points of barter. We have 23 books and one bobblehead to collect for a total of 56 points, so we can't raise that above 44. And put the other 18 in big guns. Except when I have a specific need, I'm going to do these in alphabetical order, just so I don't get confused. And for the perk, we'll take another rank of gun nut. Five more points each to repair and small guns. And yes, that was enough XP to level up twice. Level four, take one more point in big guns. We have 25 books and a bobblehead to collect for a total of 60 points, so we can't raise that above 40. Ditto for energy weapons. Plus, we'll pick up four more points when we raise perception to 10, so that caps at 36 for the moment. And put the rest in explosives. And for the perk, we're obviously taking Educated for three extra skill points every level five and up. Put the Tunnel Snake outfit back on. I don't want to be running through the wasteland in my vault suit. I won't let it end like this. Good luck with those mole rats, Dad. I'm heading to Megaton. See ya. Hello, son. Dad? I won't let it end like this. You're oh. gonna, you know, defend yourself? Um. Oh. <laughs> apparently not. Huh. Fine. I really don't want the XP for these mole rats, but I can't fast travel until they're dead, so. Oh! I guess we'll have to kill them. Just like shooting that old BB gun, you remember? Dad? <laughs> Seriously? Dad's tagged as essential, so he can't die. He just goes unconscious, but it's weird ah. that he's not defending himself. He usually will, you know, take out most of this stuff if you let him. Well, that's weird. Dad has a magic floating gun. Maybe that's why he can't use it. I wonder if that happened because he was in combat when I left the garage. Hello, son. I've seen characters get confused about their combat alert status if you load a new cell while they're following you, but he's not following me because I told him I wasn't going. He's... well, whatever. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go back and loot everything in the garage that isn't nailed down before I head to Megaton. Hopefully he already killed the bull rats in there.
And I just realized I can sleep in my bed to heal. I just need to wait 12 hours for the well-rested status to wear off before I do anything that might gain XP. Now I'm going to head to Rivet City to do some trading and meet Dad. Thirsty, partner. Try Moriarty's. I cleaned Moira, Jenny, and Gob completely out of caps, and I still have a bunch of junk left to sell. On the way, I'll pick up a couple of map markers for locations I'll be returning to later, and enough rads to give me a head start on one of the Wasteland Survival Guide objectives, but hopefully not enough to give me any debuffs yet. And there's the marker for the Super Duper Mart, which is actually my first objective for the Wasteland Survival Guide, but I don't want to go in there just yet. And hopefully, if I just skirt around the parking lot, any raiders in the area won't spot me. I mean, they have a limited pursuit radius, just like dogs, so even if they come after me, they'll give up eventually. But they have guns, so they can keep shooting me in the back until I'm out of sight. So, they're a little more dangerous in that pursuit scenario than dogs or mole rats. But, looks like I got by without incident. Nice. And there's Wilhelm's Wharf right up ahead. We'll go ahead and get back on the road. It's pretty safe around here. There can be Talon Mercs who spawn at the metro station up around the corner, but they only attack if you have good karma. And there's the tutorial message about fast travel. If you have evil karma, the ambush will be regulators, but I'm pretty sure I'm still neutral. Ooh, I might not be, though. Um... I'm not sure how much karma you gain for ending the Tranquility Lane simulation. I might be into good territory. But the mercs don't start shooting until they force greet you to gloat a bit. And if I see him coming, I'll just run away. I want to get the map marker for the Anchorage Memorial so I can fast travel when we get that part of Moira's quest. And I should really go around. But disarming mines only gives you 5 XP a pop and they're worth a lot of money. Ah, don't. I forgot there's one mine that kind of glitches through the bridge so you can barely see it. Which is actually good, because I'll need a crippled limb for another part of Moira's quest. <laughs> if I can deal with limping for that long. I think that's all of them. So let's hobble up to the memorial. There's the map marker. So now I'm going to swim the rest of the way to avoid any unnecessary combat. And there's the added bonus that this will give me a good head start on the part of Moira's quest when she asks you to get irradiated. Except for the rads, you're almost completely safe when you're swimming. Uh, and if you dive under the surface, you're completely invulnerable to damage. Well, I mean, unless you stay under until you run out of oxygen. Huh. I never noticed that before. I guess they didn't bother doing a special animation for swimming with a crippled limb, the way you limp when you walk if you have a crippled leg. And here we are. Hopefully I can run by the super mutants up on the hill before they even notice I'm here. We'll just stick close to the water, skirt around, and get back up on the road. They're up in that, well, you can see the super mutant style fort they have up there. So far, so good. Oh! Don't! Oh. <laughs> of course. Cool. There's a caravan here. I can sell some of my junk before I even go inside. <laughs> I guess they're freaked out because I'm technically still in combat with the super mutants. Guys, settle down. I need to trade. Ah, a fellow student on the path of the wasteland. Welcome to my humble caravan. Please relax, for we are in a place of safety. <laughs> the type of safety that can only be ensured by an abundance of weaponry, both wicked and awesome, all of which can be yours for the right price. Are you sure about that? Because you were looking pretty panicked about five seconds ago. Sweet. 
I now have over 1,000 caps, which I need for the next part of my plan. Yes, I know I'm crippled, and if I can, I'm going to stay that way, because it'll make that part of the Wasteland Survival Guide that much easier. If you need more ammo, this is where to get it. And there's one thing I want to buy from Cindy while I'm here. Good to see you. Welcome to a quick fix. This is a quick fix. I mean, that's the name of our shop. Polly and mine, that is. My name is Cindy. Cindy Cantelli. What do you have for sale? We've got all kinds of chems. Ouch. I wanted to buy the ant pheromones, but not at that price. All right. I guess we'll go talk to Dad. I told you it would work, Madison. And now I can prove it. James, you're back. And with good news. I was right about Braun and the Gek. If we can find one, we can adapt it to work with the purifiers. Zimmer's not going to force greet me? I, really would. This is all I guess this not is while all. Dad's talking to Maddie. So sudden. We need to get back to Project Purity. The computer there is our best chance to locate a Gek. All right, let's get going. That's my boy. It'll be good to work side by side with you, son. When I meet Dad at Project Purity, he's going to want me to clear out the super mutants inside. I don't want all that XP, so I need some companions to do most of the heavy lifting. Why am I not limping? Damn it. Anyway, Clover and Jericho require evil karma. Fox, Cross, and Butch don't become available until after this quest, which leaves RL3 and Caron. RL3 is cheaper, but I prefer Caron. He seems to do more reliable damage with his combat shotgun than RL3 does with his plasma weapon, and RL3 is kind of annoying. Anyway, you can buy Caron's contract for a thousand caps if you have barter 50, but mine's only 44. I can't spend any more skill points on it because I'll eventually be getting 46 points from books and another 10 from the bobblehead for a total of 100. Apparently I am crippled, I'm just not limping. So I need a temporary buff of 6 points to barter before I talk to Azrakal. The ant pheromones give you plus 3 charisma, which would be just enough, but then I wouldn't have enough money left. So let's go get dog meat first, and maybe I'll find enough loot in the process to afford the pheromones. The closest fast travel spot looks like the Super Duper Mart, which is also a random encounter spawn point. It's usually raiders, and I know I just went out of my way to dodge them on the way here, but oh well. <laughs> that looks like giant ants. Run away! Looked like they were dead, but something's... <laughs> A giant scorpion glitched into the sidewalk. Well, let's not look that gift horse in the mouth. Oh! Ow. Bad dog. I'm looking for a good dog. <laughs> well, it probably won't be able to follow me down here. Now we just need to find dog meat, who is usually fighting a gang of raiders the first time you enter this area, so if I hear any combat noise, I can just follow that. But apparently not this time. Hello? Dog meat? Anyone? Hello? Ah, here we go. <laughs> now that's a tough dog. He just shoulder barged a wrecked car out of the way. <laughs> Where are you going there? Oh, he figured it out. Maybe. You're dead, meat sack. Kick it. <gasps> Ow. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, that never lasts long. What's the matter, boy? Lose your master? Pretty friendly, aren't you, boy? I can be your new master. Would you like that, boy? All right. Now loot these raiders and hopefully make enough to afford the pheromones. What'd you find, boy? Aw, is that your old master? Well, waste not, want not. Oh, yes! 
Roving Trader Outfit, plus five barter, and vodka, plus one charisma. That's everything I need. Cindy can keep her stinking pheromones. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, all right. What's the uh, quickest way to Underworld, then? Probably tepid sewers to Georgetown, and then Georgetown, you can go straight to the mall. Over here! Ah! What? Oh. This isn't a usual Talon spawn point. Oh, Burke's orders. Yeah, this isn't a karma ambush. These are uh, bounty hunters that Mr. Burke hired because I disarmed the bomb in Megaton. Sick'em, boy. I will help if his health gets low, but right now it looks like he has it pretty much under control. <laughs> yeah, run away, wuss. Talon armor's worth a good bit, definitely more than raider armor. So, uh, this is actually pretty fortunate. Well, <laughs> not for them. But the thousand I need to hire Caron is only the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to need a lot more than that to make this work. The biggest single expense after that is probably going to be buying two separate themes for my house from Moira. In fact, let's go hunt down that cowardly hitman. Where is he? The compass tick. Oh, <laughs> right there. This ain't what I signed up for. Um, exactly what did you sign up for then? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, this isn't level 30 Jeff who, honestly, somebody offers a contract on him, just retire. <laughs> level 4 Jeff neither has nor deserves a reputation as a badass. And speaking of which, I need to manage my carry weight pretty carefully since my strength is only 1. Talon combat armor is 34 in about the same condition the raider armor was in. And the Raider armor is now 48, so actually worth a tiny bit more combined than separately. Good. So Talon combat armor is hopefully better, you know, a little bit more than that in good condition. Anyway, I'm not going to chase the chicken down to where the Mirelurks and Super Mutants live, but there was another one Dogmate killed up on the memorial. Oh, uh, no, he's still alive too. All right, sick him, boy. And let's repair that. 61, nice. Anyway, tepid sewers. Nothing but mole rats and a few raiders in here for the most part. And if Dogmeat could handle Talon Mercs with laser weapons, he shouldn't have any trouble with this. No, except there's a turret in here, but... Hopefully I can disable that. Oh no, average. I couldn't hack that even if I wanted to, so hopefully we can just run around it before it gets a lock on us. Excuse me. In fact, even with companions, there's no reason to fight anything we don't have to, so I'm just going to gun it through here. Dogmeat will probably get distracted by something along the way, but he'll catch up at the next loading screen. Smooth. Never mind me, just passing through. And... Georgetown. Yep, there's dog meat. Now, I should hotkey my stem packs. Because that was getting a little dicey toward the end. This part of Georgetown has super mutants. Well, I mean, pretty much all of Georgetown has super mutants, but there are probably two or three of them right across from the metro station here. And we need to get to the big crater at the other end of town. 
Um, my normal style with a normal character build would be to stealth it up here, try to sneak by them, but run like crazy and ignore the bullets has been working so far, so let's stick with what works. Um, I'll try to avoid too much jumping off ledges, just so dog meat has a better chance of keeping up. Companions tend to get really confused if you veer away from obvious walkable paths. I lost him already. Nope. There he is. Good boy. There's always a centaur up here, which we will ignore. Oh! Yep. Ah! Radioactive spit. Lovely. And now I have radiation poisoning. But that's good. Sort of. You know, for Moira. And... Oh, oh no. Ah. I was hoping I was low enough level that guy wouldn't be there. A super mutant brute with a minigun. And I'm not sure I can just shrug off getting shot in the back by that all the way to the crater. Sick him, boy. No? <laughs> Smart dog. Oh, he wasn't running away for the minigun. He was running toward the guys flanking us. Very smart dog. Yeah, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to help this time. Oh, all right. Did you, uh... Get the minigun guy, too? Nope. <laughs> oh, he's going for it. How you doing, boy? Oh, he's at half health. I'd better help. If I can get over this concrete slab. Oh! The super mutant's almost dead. Alright, you got this, boy. Yeah. Good dog. And nothing else between here and the crater. Alright, let's go. You know, when I was planning this, I thought I was just going to show you the level ups and it would all get edited down to a single, maybe half hour video. But I've been playing for hours and I think I took a half an hour just explaining the strategy and the math behind it. And then I ran into some kind of interesting and unusual events. And now I'm thinking I'm going to make it a little mini series. Um... I'm still going to edit out most of the basic stuff that you've seen in every Fallout 3 walkthrough ever, but there are probably going to be a lot of nuances and strategic choices to get maximum skill points off of minimum XP. Uh, plus with Fallout 3, I've played this game a lot, and 10, well, almost 11 years later, I still run into stuff I've never seen, or weird glitches or whatever. So after we hire Karen, I think I'm going to call it a day. Oh, Chinese uh, Army Special Ops Manual. That's a, a valuable skill book. Oh, that seems really unfair. I mean, you know, on the vicious dog's part. Dog meat is, uh, you know, he's set so that he can handle himself around super mutants and, you know, other stuff the character runs into, so these poor things didn't stand a chance. Hmm. Didn't know there were mines there. Guess the Brotherhood of Steel set them out to keep random stuff from attacking their position on the mall, but I don't think I have ever walked on that particular part of the sidewalk because I did not know there were mines there, and I've been through this street many a time. I need barter skill of 50 to get Karen's contract for a thousand caps. It's only 44 but the roving trader outfit and some booze will buff it to 51. Scotch and vodka have the same effects, but I can get more money by selling the vodka, so scotch it is. And let's talk to Azrakal. Excellent. Another customer. 
Actually, let's make absolutely sure. 51. Good. Well, now, looky here. We got us a smooth skin that I ain't ever seen before. I'm Azrakal, and this... This is the Ninth Circle. Folks got problems, and I got liquor to sell them. Well, liquor and a few other pick-me-ups, huh? You need anything, uh, you just let me know. Might as well sell anything he'll buy. I need a drink. Your misery, my wealth. 1,200 caps now. I could have afforded the pheromones, but whatever. Who's that guy in the corner? That's Sharon. Let's just say, well, he's a loyal employee. Don't mess with me, and he won't mess with you. He is absolutely loyal to whomever holds his contract. Unfailing, unflinching, until the day that employment ends. Don't get me wrong. I have no doubt that he holds no end of animosity towards me. But so long as he is my employee, he is as gentle as a teddy bear. I want to talk to you about Sharon's contract. Oh, would you now? He is a highly valuable asset to me and to the Ninth Circle. What did you have in mind? I'll give you a thousand caps for it. I suppose that could work. Yes. Yes, here's the contract. And I'll take my payment in full. I'll give you the pleasure of informing Sharon yourself. Man, Sharon is huge. I never noticed that before either. Talk to... Slow down there. I have good news. I'm your new employer. You purchased my contract from Razrakal, so I am no longer in his service. That is good to know. Please, wait here. I must take care of something. Enjoying your Azrakal. stay? I am told that I am no longer in your service. Yes. See? We're not so bad. All right, let's go. Sounds good. Let's get out of here. As you wish. Oh my god, he shot Azrakal. All right, next time we'll keep up with those uh, precious collectibles, quest rewards, and level ups to get skill points. And I'll see you soon.